So 82% of the wealth that was created in 2017, you want to know how many people got it? 1%. The good old 1%ers took 82% of the wealth. This is in uh, the money section of CNN.com. So uh, by Ivana Katasova. Let's see how they report this on CNN. Is it an indictment of the one percenters? Is it like, uh, we need socialism? Let's, let's just see. I don't know. Um, that's a, more than eight, eight of every $10 of wealth created last year went to the richest 1%. That's according to a new report from Oxfam International, which estimates that the bottom 50% of the world's population saw no increase in wealth. Oxfam says the trend shows that the global economy is skewed in favor of the rich rewarding wealth instead of work. Right? The billionaire boom is not a sign of a thriving economy, but a symptom of a failing economic system, said Winnie Biralima, uh, executive director of Oxfam International. The head of the advocacy group argued that the people who make our clothes, assemble our phones, and grow our food are being exploited in order to enrich corporations and the super wealthy. It, the study, released ahead of the World Economic Forum, um, was produced using data from Credit Suisse's Global Wealth Data Book. <laughs> of course, Credit Suisse has a Global Wealth Data Book. Are you in the data book? I am. I've just got a new plane. Um, the report highlights the detrimental effects of gender inequality with data that show more than men, show that show more men own land, shares, and other capital assets than women. Rising inequity uh, has been a major topic. Oxfam said it is time for the global elite to stop talking about inequality and start changing their ways. Governments also need to tackle tax avoidance and put limits on shareholder returns and executive pay, Oxfam said. The group argues companies should not issue dividends to shareholders unless they pay their workers living wage. Oxfam also said that tax policy... <laughs> it's all Oxfam. So this journalist has no opinion on anything. Oxfam said this. Oxfam thinks we should do that. Okay, I mean, thank you for this title. You know, and thank you for giving us all the information from Oxfam. But this journalist, you're just... What do you... Why don't you just reprint the, the highlights of the report? Why are you even writing? You're not even writing anything. You're just saying the study this. The rising, rising equality. And then just quotes. It's hard to find a political or business leader who doesn't say they are worried about inequality. It's even harder to find one who's doing something about it. <laughs> That's a good quote. These are good quotes. So I don't know if this journalist is just, is afraid to give an opinion or thinks this is a really informed opinion or is being told by high up, don't make this too inflammatory. So she's just trying to put in as much as she can. And if that's the case, hats off. But it's so just like, oh, the link is below. I mean, literally it's a, it's a 60 second read. It's like, it's like nothing. It gives the statistics and it's something we all know, but, and there's some quotes on what we should do, but it's all Oxfam, Oxfam, you know? There's no even like, here's some billionaires doing something about it, or this is like, this is what you get in the corporate media's business section. I mean, the title alone is, I'm, I'm, hats off, the 1% grabbed 80% of the, all the wealth created. Okay. But man, this is why we are, I don't know if the billionaire class they don't care. They're not aware of this. They're so insulated and so pampered. They have no idea what's going on. All they care about is, oh, I got to make money, make money, make money. And they don't care that people are getting screwed over. They don't care that they could help literally billions of people. The bottom half of the world's population could benefit so much and they don't want to help. It's not sustainable. I doubt there's any billionaires watching this, but if you are, this isn't sustainable. And if you don't do something about it, as that one guy said that was on Aggressive Progressive, I forget his name, but he said the Hamptons are not a defensible position. You better get on the right side of history because let them eat cake is going to be your tombstone. 
if you don't, because there's going to be an uprising. If the bottom half get mobilized and that number of people that poor and those inequities keeps rising, keeps rising, keeps rising, and the one percenters keep making more money and the rest of the population keeps losing money and not making gains, record profits for these companies, record profits. And this is what we're getting. So it's a big year, 2018, you guys. This is kind of a make or break year. It's not 2020, it's 2018 is a make or break year for getting some real progressives in there. Real progressives. Don't just, oh, we got to get Democrats in there. Get real progressives. Get rid of the incumbents. Get rid of the corporate Republicans and Democrats. You know, do what, go to ourvoiceusa.org and find out who's running. Pay attention. Get involved in campaigns of candidates you really want to back. Push them out on social media. Have them email me so I'll interview them if they're if they're good uh, progressives. That's what we got to do. And thanks for watching this show. And uh, the FNX show, we're shooting this weekend, of course. We've got 10 more episodes all the way through April. Please come out to one of them. Jimmy Dore's on one. This weekend, Steph Zamorano, January 28th, is on the show. Um, so come on out. It's The link is at GrahamElwood.com. We'll see you at the show. <laughs>